So let's just quickly start with Puppeteer. I already have Puppeteer installed here as you can see in my package.json. To install Puppeteer is very simple. It is installed exactly the way you will install any other node package out there. So let us just get quickly get started. So we'll first require Puppeteer. So on Puppeteer equals to require Puppeteer. The next we'll create a function so that we can use Puppeteer. So Puppeteer, not Puppeteer, function pup is a nice name. Now a lot of function Puppeteer, almost all the function Puppeteer return a promise. So you can use promise or you can use async. So I'm going to use async function. And it's also async function, not func. Uh, async function and the first thing we're going to do is of course launch a browser. To launch a browser, there's a function called launch in Puppeteer that we'll be using. So browser equals to await puppeteer.launch it is now by default puppeteer will launch a headless browser we actually want to open an instance of a browser so we have to explicitly say headless to for and let us just run it so we'll also say pup we'll call it here uh, pup. as you can see the browser was launched nothing interesting here what else we want to do is let's say we're going to open a page and we're going to redirect that page somewhere on the internet. So we'll specify a URL on that new page and it will redirect us to this font page. Font page equals to a browser dot new page. A new page method here opens a new page like it's self-explanatory. Why am I talking? Await page dot go to and as the name suggests and as VS Code is telling us it is the URL to navigate the page to. So I'm gonna to navigate to the world's most popular website ever, Google.com. Search engine. Whatever you wanna say. Notepub opens up a new page and goes redirects us to Google. So there are a lot more things that you can do. Let us say you want to take a screenshot of this page. So let us take screenshot, right? Or let us first, as I let me just show you this again. Maybe you're wondering why this is coming into this window only. So to fix this, we need to specify a default viewport. Sorry, a default viewport size. So let's specify this here. Default viewport, and this is an object that has two properties: width, let's say 1366, height. 768 and this time you'll see if it's specific it will take the entire size even the window is not resized but it's trying to take 1366 width and 768 height right so let us just quickly start as I was telling you before to how to take a screenshot so await page dot screenshot and there are a couple of options here most of them are actually optional option optional option wow we specify path basically just specify a name so that screenshot is put relative to the path of this file here so if this file is the one we are writing into so let's say screenshot one why one because we'll be specifying the type as jpeg not jpeg jpeg and while we specify jpeg we can also specify the quality here so quality is a number between 0 to 100 0 being the lowest quality, 100 being the highest quality. So we first specify a quality of 0. So we're going to copy this screenshot 2 and we're going to specify that to 100 so that we can clearly see the difference between the two qualities here. 100, 2, 100. Let us also close the browser because we are manually seeing it closing this. So wait. We can also take the page. We can also close the page first. Then we can close the browser, but I think you directly close the browser because I've never closed manually closed the page before. Okay, notepad. It will take two screenshots, and those two screenshots are here. As you can see, this one with zero quality, very distorted. Nothing is clear. It's like one of those clips taken from old cameras screenshot to here a lot 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 
clear dot clear is in the first everything is clear you can read gmail images sign in although i know what is written here but i will not read it here so let us just so look what else we can do of course yeah if we specify headless to true we can also take the pdf of the page so let me take pdf right let me take pdf for something more for a website that has something more on this front page so i'm going to go to shortcalls.com and there are a couple of optional parameters that in the case of screenshot you saw me passing a couple of optional parameters similar is the case of pdf right so there are a couple of optional parameters so you can specify the page sorry the path for the format you can specify what format you want to have let's say i want to have a4 the most common format and then whether you want it into landscape mode or to portrait mode by default it's always on portrait mode to so specify whether you want to do landscape mode you can say landscape to true now by default it is always false so it's always in portrait mode when you want to explicitly say that okay i want this video to be in a landscape mode then you specify landscape to true so we run this and i didn't see it creating okay i just messed up here big time pdf not screenshot dash one but screenshot only here it is our screenshot and it will be in the same finder otherwise vs code will try to open it up here we, as you can see it's already in portrait mode sorry in landscape mode and it has taken the entire screenshot of the web page like the entire screenshot and divide into multiple pages and that is the why i decided to use a different website because using google would have just like did uh, did the entire thing on with this one single page let me check what else we can do yes of course we can use emulate different devices so we can say devices equals to require puppy device descriptors here yeah. so it will give us the list of devices that it supports so we can just first console log to see the devices that puppy tutor supports a lot of devices that it supports and i don't really want to go anywhere i want to revert this back to google so next up as you can see the devices it supports so it's supporting all the way back to galaxy s3 iPhone 6 plus, iPhone 8 plus, iPhone X landscape, iPhone 10 landscape and iPhone 10. So let us try to use iPhone 10. So const iPhone 10 equals to devices. iPhone 10. Now that we have our iPhone 10 here, we can say pitch dot emulate i'm going to do this before the page go to page dot emulate and what we want to emulate to our iphone iphone 10. okay we need to do headless to false we don't want to console our devices again <clears throat> then clear it and then write no pub as you can see okay sorry sorry for that problem close as you can see it has opened this up on iphone and as if you saw that before let me open this again It's better in the app so even google is detecting from window sizes that this is an iphone let us search something on iphone so it's giving you that same mobile experience here <clears throat> so what else yeah so one of the most practical use cases of uh let me just remove this you won't be needing this now one of the more practical use cases of puppeteer is to use it with a library like cheerio so that you can use it for web scraping so the two major uh use cases of puppeteer line automation automation testing and your web scraping so for web scraping you would use a library like cheerio but for cheerio you need to have a page content like the page source code so 
<coughs> to get paid source code, we just simply console this out and also just yeah, prove I don't want to open the browser again. Mm, we're gonna say await page dot content and that's it. So this will print out a page for us. As you can see, it did print out the entire first page of Google. So you can similarly you can use for other website you want to scrape data on, you'll get the source code through Puppeteer and then you'll use a Cheerio library to extract whatever data you want. So let me just uh, try to do something else now. Uh, okay, so one of the most popular things with uh, Puppeteer, emulating keyboard keyboard press events. So we're gonna go to Google. This time I want to say false because of course how will we emulate a keyboard press event when there's no browser. The reason I'm opening it here, you'll see. So as you can see, we need a selector to for this input box because we need to know where we will be typing it. And similarly, we'll be needing selectors in case of Cheerios as well. In Cheerios library, you need to have selector for the element. So we'll have selector, okay. Sorry. Inspect. And then we'll right click here, Chrome does the rest of the work for us. We're gonna copy the selector. We're gonna close this. So this this function in Puppeteer that is page.type. So await page dot type. And the first argument that they accept as you can see is a selector. So let us give that selector to it. I didn't copy over it. The next thing is the string, right? Okay. The next thing is a string that we need to give it. And this string is what we want to type. A text to type in the focused element, as it says. So let us type puppet here. The third is an optional uh, argument, and that is a delay. So delay is the amount of time you want to have between each keystroke. Let me give a delay of 100 milliseconds. And this is this value is in milliseconds. So what else do you want to do? Nothing, right? So notepad opens up a browser, types in puppet here. Okay, okay. We need we forgot to press enter. So to press enter is very easy. Puppet here will give us page dot keyboard. And from keyboard we can press enter key so we can just simply write enter so similarly you can automate a lot of stuff with puppeteer right so i guess that is it for the very basic tutorial of puppeteer and stay tuned for more